from Delta, and today we're going to talk about the case for the programmable stage. Now, a lot of questions that we get, particularly when we're talking about a new x-ray purchase is, do I really need a programmable stage? I will tell you that more times than not, whenever somebody asks me that, and then they proceed to purchase a manual stage or just a flat-based unit, invariably afterwards they say, I really wish I had gotten that programmable stage. So let's talk about why you might want that. And what we're going to do here is run a series of examples with uh, this little piece of plated steel here. This should be a, a zinc on steel. And hopefully you can see that I've added about seven different little marks on there. And this is going to be our example piece. Did seven marks just because that's typically the minimum required number of measurements in any sampling plan. The unit I'm using today is already equipped with a programmable stage. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this uh, piece of plexiglass here to mimic a manual stage. So I'm going to put our part on there. Close the door so that goes back in. And now what we've got to do is manually adjust and find our part. Let's get that back farther on there. So I've got more room to play. I think that might have been it as it went by. Let's lower down a little bit. Get in focus. Aha, I see something. What have we got here? That is just the end of our plexi. can already see one of the dangers of the manual stage. I bumped the head with a plexiglass. Aha, here is our part. And now let's see if we can find the first one. Aha, here's our first tick mark. Do a little focus here. Now I'm actually going to do this as a series of test readings. Normally if I was doing an example, we would have sped this up so you don't have to sit through and watch this countdown. But I, I really do want to see the exact time it takes for these readings. This part number, we're going to call this manual. My initials in there because it's me. Yay. Okay. We're going to do 10 second measurements. I have seen people crank this down to three, five seconds. 10 seconds is probably about the minimum you want to do for any application on an x ray. All right, one done. Scoot over to our next one. And these readings are about a half an inch apart across the face of this, just to give you an idea of how far we're moving each time uh, in an effort to make this as quick as possible, just to give the manual stage a fair showing uh, I am using the start measurement button on the front of the x-ray just to cut down on time between movement and start. And you can see we're just kind of scooting that around there.
to be fair, uh, I've had about eight cups of coffee so far today, so my hands are a little shaky. Um, that may may make a little bit of a difference in the time in between readings, but I don't think it's that big a deal, particularly because I'm moving quicker because of the caffeine than without. And this should now, that should, this should be our last mark here. And it is. So we can look at the timestamps for the reading and we can see that it took probably two and a half minutes for our manual readings and that's just the readings themselves that did not include any of the initial adjustments all right let's block this off and now let's redo this well, we're going to use the programmable stage to do the initial lining up and all of the movement of the actual parts. So let's toss this guy in here, laser on or around our first tick mark. A little focus so we can see what we're doing. And this should be, yep, that is our first mark right there. This is manual movement of the stage. And again, these are the same seven marks we did with the manual stage. So we're not changing anything. It is the exact same part pieces. The marks are equidistant still. And while our numbers should be fairly consistent, we're not super concerned with the consistency of the numbers, though that will prove that I really am hitting the same spots every time. Again, I'm using the joystick on the front and that start button because that's going to be the quickest way of doing things. We could also control it from the screen uh, with the mask to hit start. I do know that takes longer. So I don't think necessarily a fair comparison. And here is our last reading coming up.
And you can see, start to finish, we're two minutes on the nose. We've probably gained about 30 seconds, and that may not seem like a lot of time. However, it is when we start talking about your sampling 15, 20 lots a day, multiply that out. How many shifts are you running? How many days are you running parts? That number can add up really, really quickly. Our final example is going to be full programming of the stage. So we know where all of these spots are. This is an application that we were running quite often. So we know the offset for all of these spots, where they are, where they're going to be, where we want them to be. And they're always in the same place. So we can now take our part and slide it back in to these stops. And that's done all of the positioning for us. And we can close. And now I can just go right to take a, I can hit run. Uh, and that's gonna start this XY programming that we've already built into the application. And you can make all of these different XY programs for all of your different parts. You can jig them, you can have this set up if you have got noticeable features or pads, particularly if we're talking about a circuit board, we can do pattern recognition and you don't even have to jig it. You just have to make sure that your initial feature that you're using as your indexing point is on the screen. What's even more beautiful about this than the time savings is I'm free to go and do something else. I don't need to be here and hold the x-ray's hand through this entire series of measurements. Granted, we're only doing seven measurements right now, but maybe you're plating a whole bunch of rivets and you need to take five measurements on the head of each one and it's 200 samples per lot. That's a lot of measurements. And that's a lot of time to have somebody just standing there fiddling with the controls to make sure that all of your readings are getting done and in the places that you want them done. And we are already done with our last measurement. And again, just looking at the time spent taking measurements, we are just over a minute and a half. So we've saved another at least 30 seconds over our manual movement of the stage with the joystick and an entire minute, which is a huge savings over just moving the part via the manual stage using, like I had the piece of acrylic to actually uh, adjust things into place. Let's break this down into some meaningful numbers so we can see what this actually means. So for the manual stage, the part alignment alone took a minute 45. The seven readings took two minutes, 37 seconds for a total time of four minutes, 22 seconds. That means if you have an operator making $16.50, it costs $1.20 per batch. Quality Tech, which probably makes closer to 24, is $1.75 per batch. Now, if we're using the joystick, the part alignment is 35 seconds. Seven readings takes two minutes and 15 seconds for a total time of two minutes, 50 seconds, where we save a minute 32. For the operator, that means 
it's going to cost about 78 cents a batch, which saves us 42 cents per batch. Quality tech, that's going to cost more like $1.13 a batch and save you about 61 cents per batch. Fully programmed, our part alignment took 19 seconds. Seven readings was a minute 51 for a total time of two minutes, 10 seconds. With this time savings of over two minutes, 11 seconds, our operator cost drops to 60 cents per batch for a cost savings of 61 cents. Quality tech is going to cost 87 cents for a savings of 88 cents per batch. So a programmable stage can pay for itself in as little as dun, da, 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 three months. Les here. Just wanted to thank you for stopping by. I know your time is really valuable, so I'm only going to take up a couple seconds of it. Just wanted you to know that there really are people here ready to help you. If you can't find what you're looking for here, you have the option of calling us, emailing us, or messaging us. Looking forward to hearing from you if you need any help.